talk about who's going to pay for that and how. Well, these two guys are. With me now, former House Majority Leader Dick Armey. Very thin, spelt and fit, I might point out. So. Congressman, to you first. It, 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 this cost, I think, is a is a minimum. The 800 billion is a minimum. We had Senator Jeff Sessions here saying it could be a trillion more than that. Mm -hmm. The CBO has weighed in. What do you make of that? Well, I, I, again, it, it seems like they've kind of said. And for whatever political point we want to make here, because they're not making an economic policy point, this, this is not about sound thinking about real policy, it's about politics, uh, we're willing to spend any kind of money. The first question I have, where's the money coming from? Does anybody really understand where this money comes from? You either tax it, or you borrow it, or you print it, but in the end, finally, someplace you're going to tax it to, to make it up. I think it's a curious form of fiscal child abuse, and my biggest concern about the whole thing is it won't work. You're not, if, if that level of deficit spending uh, to which we've already committed ourselves and engaged is not resolving this problem, then that Keynesian formula is not going to work with more. All right, but the argument, Ron Paul, has been, look, we got to do something. And the argument is, well, the government then has got to do something and spend a lot of something. What do you think? Well, yeah, I think they could do something. They could cut spending, mm -hmm. balance the budget, bring our troops home, uh, quit printing money, cut, you know, get rid of the income tax, a few minor things like that. No, we need to change the whole system of government. We need to live within our means. We need to reduce our debt. Uh, but we need to change our philosophy of government. As the long as you philosophy is kind of, the argument goes, we need quick action, quick stimulus. Now, we need a quick boost now. And none of the stuff you took were all well and good. And that one does that. No, I, I would disagree to a degree on that because uh, they're going to appropriate money and they say this is a stimulus, we're going to do something immediately. Well, they've been doing this immediately for a year. Every time they come up with a new program, it doesn't do anything. It just seems to make things worse. So it's just as easy to say, look, today, we're going to take a different approach. We're going to change the system. We're going to believe in free enterprise again. We're going to believe in freedom once again. We're going to believe in self-reliance once again. We're going to believe in a time when we don't even need income taxes. We're going to believe in a time when we don't have to be the policemen of the world. We don't have to believe in deficits. It's this whole philosophy of government that has to be changed. It's a mental status that has to change. You can't tinker with the budget and say, well, we're going to cut here, cut here, well, tax here, right? Cut spending. Yeah. You know what happens? They never do it. And what are the well, one of the things that struck me, and, 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 and I don't know how you felt about it, Dick, but the first thing that, that struck me was uh, Barack Obama saying the government is the only entity that can do something here. It's our last best hope, I'm paraphrasing, but that, that was his premise. What do you make of it? Well, yes, the government can do a great deal. They're not the only thing. Ultimately, the if prosperity, and when prosperity returns to America, that prosperity will be born and found and nurtured and grown in the private sector. But the government can get out of the way and the government can quit doing harmful things. There are some things that, that uh, the president-elect's talking about that I think make sense. Yes, we should have a higher priority on real infrastructure spending, but it should be instead of some of the wasteful, unnecessary things we're doing, by contract with the private but sector... You didn't question the infrastructure spending part, I mean. not, not entirely. No. Um, I mean, the states have a responsibility for that, but even if the federal government would be doing it, it has to be paid for, but you just can't add it on. So in the interim, you can say, if I can cut a couple billion dollars from overseas, put half of it toward the debt, and put half of it toward infrastructure, I would. But ultimately, though, uh, infrastructure should be a responsibility of, of local state governments. I mean, that's what it was meant to be. So, you know, guys, what we're looking at here is, let's say it's a trillion dollars. We know the deficit is going to be about a trillion dollars. So we've, we've doubled down, as I say, in black tech, right? And, and on the hope that it's going to pay off. You think it will? Uh, I know I don't. And I think this is kind of the heartbreaking thing. And I understand the anxiety that the average American uh, is experiencing. My wife and I sit down, we look at our 401k, we say, where did it go? I talked to my brother and I talked to others. And there's this kind of romantic hope that we all cling to that, gee, if the government just gets this right, maybe I can look at my 401k and my values will have come back. But the problem is what you're more likely to get, because the values will be restored when the junk is off your balance sheet 
and that, that inventory of junk is removed. The government's not removing it, they're just setting it aside. They want to use our money to buy it up. In the meantime, what I'm likely to get is a, uh, a uh, retirement uh, account that appears nominally to be worth more, but is of reduced value, in fact, by virtue of the inflation that is consequence to this kind of uh, fund funding mechanism. What do you say? Well, you know, the Austrian economists have for more than 10 years predicted what was would happen. And they have been saying, don't even get in the stock market, you know, when everybody thought they were making these. So they're not worried about their 401ks because uh, they weren't there because there was a big bubble. The housing bubble was there. The, the evidence was right on the table. How so long do you think all of this lasts? The, no, how long the bubble has been? The bubble, the morass, you know, the, it's, it's How long has it going right. to last or how long has it been going on? I mean, I mean, how long has it been going on, but now, now the, 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 the hit for us is how long? Okay, the seeds were planted in 71, and I guess the really the unwinding began really in the year 2000 with the collapse right. of the NASDAQ, but really hit in 07. So it's already been going on eight or nine years because the How much longer? If, if, if we continue to do exactly what we're doing now, it's going to be as long, if not longer, than the Depression of the 30s because we're doing everything wrong and we're propping up prices of houses, propping down well, the value. Even if it started in 2000, when everything hit the fan in 2000, we'd be out of it in another year or two. Oh, yeah, but uh, people say that we never even got out of the Depression until we had a war. That's the kind of mentality right. that we have today. No, you. we're nowhere close to ending it. We won't so even. 12 years by that definition. We have to okay. liquidate right. debt. We have okay. to allow prices to go down, and we're not allowing right. And that's a problem. We've become a kind of a nation of inconvenience minimizers. The fact of the matter, for the market to make this correction, as it did, for example, in the dot-com thing just a decade or so ago, there are going to have to be some people who are going to have to eat the pain that is consequential to bad decisions. But we've got a government that says nobody should ever have to live by the consequences of the bad decisions. Somebody's going to. Okay. It's going to be this generation that made the bad choices right. or our kids that are going to live with the foolishness of compound. It's hit the fan, hasn't it? Gentlemen, thank you both very much. Very good seeing you. Well, an economy on the edge and...